We've handled many a disaster in this city. Why was this so unusual? I don't have an answer, but they should have been better prepared. The city should have been ready and able to help and give direction to people who were rebuilding. Don't just let them rebuild. You know that this is not the right way to go. The city, the government, the, the, the organizations that support the people, both the homeowners and the businesses, they were so unprepared. We say, were well, the businesses prepared? Our city, our state was unprepared to rebuild us the way we need to be rebuilt. Hi, I'm Sally Ann Bartels. I work at the Staten Island Chamber of Commerce. I'm formerly of National Grid, retired after 35 years. National Grid is the local gas utility. I think we all were under a misconception that FEMA was going to help businesses. So we rushed out and told businesses to apply for a FEMA number and get at least recorded that you were in, the business was impacted. Ultimately, FEMA was only here to help residential homeowners, so the businesses weren't able to do anything with that. So, um, you know, they, they really needed money, and their entire business, most of them, Highland Boulevard, uh, Father Capanzano, uh, all on Midland and Sand Lane and so on, they were so decimated, they didn't know where to start. We had about eight feet on the first floor. Um, this part of the boulevard for two miles is like a bathtub. So what happened is the water went past us probably about, by about three feet, but then it came back. The city then closed the floodgates, which they had to protect the plant, and then the water just slowly was rising. I have it on film. It just rose like two inches every minute until it got to about eight feet. So it actually got stuck in the building, you know. Um, nobody thought it was going to even come down to Highland Boulevard, so we lost all our electronics, all our machines, everything, because salt water eventually kills everything. If it didn't kill it that week, three weeks later, everything was a shot. We lost total electricity, and uh, it was very disheartening as a business owner for that to happen. Yeah, we started in 1942. My grandfather and my uncle opened up across the street, right across the street, Will and John's. And um, they were just a small automotive repair. And they built the business. My father took over in 70. And he grew the business. And then he did a great job, my dad. And then I took over in 90 when we moved across the street. So, you know, three generations, 74, 75 years. You know, so we've seen a lot of things on Staten Island, you know? <laughs> what am I going to do if I don't do this, you know? You know, and I think everybody felt the same way. So for that one time, whatever you saved or whatever loans you can get, you're putting it back together. You're saying, you know what? I really don't know how to do anything else. And that's being honest with you guys. Everybody says, yeah, I was going to start and move to Florida. Where, what are you going to do in Florida? You know, this is all we know. And for people that are in business more than five, it takes you a long time to build up a clientele. So where are you going? Where am I going to go? I'm going to go to Florida. Who's this guy from New York? Like, you know, and where are you getting the money to open up there? What are you going to get for here? So sort of you had no choice the first time to rebuild. The city was not prepared to tell them what they should have done as they were rebuilding. I, they, they turned a blind eye. They knew these businesses were rebuilding. They had to get back in business. On more a homeowner perspective, my daughter Juliana did work for Project Hope uh, right immediately following the hurricane and she dealt with the homeowners and the renters in the, the beachfront community. We would basically walk around the neighborhood. It, anything we saw in homes was a, just mess. A giant, a giant mess of people that didn't know where to pick up again and kind of where to go forward. 